Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, it is Thursday morning. Let me get back here in the light a little bit. <laughs> I've got a, uh, got a power situation in my office here, so... Dealing with a lack of light. Good morning. High Energy Thursday. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is uh, Hillsong Young and Free. Hillsong Young and Free. I think it's the youth branch of their recording industry. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, congratulations to the Cubs, huh? The Cubs, they did it. They pulled it out. Wow. Lombard, Illinois. Good morning. Hey, Prophet Helen. Good morning, good morning. Drinking your blueberry almond milk this morning. Go Cubs. Go Cubs from Memphis. Wow, okay. Yeah, the drought is over. 108 years. Isn't that amazing? Woodbridge, Virginia. Good morning. Philadelphia. Good morning. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release a heart. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great to have you on with me this morning. God bless you. Yeah, never give up. What are, what are some of the lessons that you learned from the Cubs last night? Wasn't that an amazing game? Were you watching the game? Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing game. Just the just the whole scheme of the thing, the whole scope of of, of the the uh, game seven and uh, the 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 Cubs jumping out on top, then the Indians coming back, and then the Cubs getting some more, and the Indians come back, and the pitching changes, and 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 the the pitcher that you expect to excel uh, does not excel. So then, what do you do? Uh, just all the decisions the managers had to make uh, when uh, when the Cleveland Indians hit the home run in the in the bottom of the eighth inning to tie the game, I was like, "Oh, you got to be kidding me!" <laughs> oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Then the rain delay. Then the rain delay. I mean, what what more could you put into a game seven? It was just absolutely amazing. Tampa, Florida. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, Gloria, Mississippi. Good morning. Yeah, never give up. I see several of you are saying never give up. So I guess that's a lesson to learn from uh, the Chicago Cubs. Never give up, even in the game last night. Never give up. Never give up. The Cleveland Indians never gave up. The the Cubs never gave up. They both played uh, just a great game last night. Very exciting game. Very dramatic, intense game. Uh, just just amazing. Just amazing. Just amazing. Yeah, comeback. Chicago's a comeback city. I guess so. Certainly was last night. And the Cubs win three in a row to win the thing. They're down three to one, then they have to come back and win three in a row. Isn't that amazing? Wow. What a story, huh? 108 years. 108 years. <laughs> Perseverance, yes. Perseverance. Perseverance, absolutely. Wow, wow, wow. Well, congratulations to the Chicago Cubs. Congratulations to the Cleveland Indians. They played a great game, a great series. Uh, I, I heard on the radio this morning coming in that both teams scored 27 runs during the World Series. Uh, game 7 goes 10 innings. I mean, it's pretty even. Pretty even. E either team could have won. So it was uh, just amazing. Very amazing the way it played out. Well, good morning. Good to have you with me this morning on Leader Scope. Enough of baseball. Chicago Cubs, World Series champions. First time in 108 years. Just, just absolutely amazing. So, what a great story. Um, this Sunday, we have Ryan Lestrange with us back at Cornerstone again. Two weeks in a row now, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Move of God, Reformation, Revival Spirit. Uh, we're going to see healing take place, deliverance take place. Uh, people are going to get saved. It's going to be a mighty, mighty move of the Spirit of God this Sunday. So if you're in the area, we encourage you to come on out and join us at Cornerstone this Sunday, November the 6th. 
This is also the weekend that we turn our clocks back, I believe, so uh, don't forget about that as well. We get an extra hour of sleep Saturday night. How about that? What you can say about Russia? Okay, let's not talk about Russia. So we're talking about Reformation. Uh, Reformation being um, the move of God in our time. Hey, Monica in Mississippi, good morning. Reformation being the improvement or the uh, amendment of what is wrong, what is corrupt, what is unsatisfactory. So we desire to see reformation take place. And that's only going to happen when we get desperate about something and we determine that something is unacceptable so that we are driven to take action because we become so passionate about that situation. Reforming something is also putting an end to abuse, putting an end to disorder. Uh, it's giving a language to the groans of people and it's giving a new voice to a new era. When the new era came in the Gospels, John the Baptist showed up as a reformer. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So he was reforming things, preparing things, getting things ready for the one who was to come after him, the one whose name is Jesus, the Son of the living God. And so we've been looking at these issues of reformation, and we've been talking about the need for grace. When reformation is happening, we need the grace of God in our lives. And so we've been looking at some things that grace does, the actions of grace in reformation. And we have said one of the things that grace does is it opens up our eyes. There's an opening of our eyes to see what God is revealing, to see what God is showing us. And that's going to help us conquer our ignorance and conquer even our foolishness. And so we need grace for our eyes to be opened. Grace is also going to lead us into radical obedience. It's not about what you can get away with. It's about obedience to the will of God, the word of God. If God says it, we do it. And it's that simple. We've also said that grace is going to build something internally in our lives over a long period of time. Grace is always building something. And it's a process that requires time. And it requires patience and perseverance on our part. Uh, grace also brings to an end the hastiness of the flesh where we jump at things because we want immediate gratification. And so we're not wise about the decisions we're making and the time that needs to be invested into a process. Um, grace is also going to kill off all external intimidation. Where we have been intimidated by external things, grace is going to come in and cut off that type of intimidation. Grace is also imparting strong love into our lives, the love of God is being imparted into us by the Holy Spirit, and we, we get this desire to tap into the prophetic frequency of God, to hear the word of the Lord, to know the will of God. Another thing grace does is it removes all of our ambition and the requirements that we have for some type of outward validation. Grace is going to strip that from us where we no longer need that external validation, where we no longer need that, that quest for uh, uh, ambition and uh, our agenda to be fulfilled simply because we want things to go our way. Grace is going to help us cut those things off. So no more intimidation, uh, no more ambition, no more need for external validation. Now you may get external validation, but what I'm saying is you don't need it. It's not like it's something that's driving you. If you get it, fine. If you don't get it, fine. It's okay with you. Grace is also going to deliver us from the condition of being alone. The condition of loneliness. And that loneliness gets replaced with a rich relational component where we learn what it means to live in covenant relationships and we co-labor with others, we collaborate with other people. Grace is also going to impart into our lives an internal precision where we are in the right place at the right time, we're hearing accurately, we're seeing accurately, we're acting with accuracy. Grace is also going to kill off our competitiveness where we're no longer competing with each other, but we are instead, as I said, co-laboring with one another. Grace is going to 
create an internal platform in our lives. It's going to build this internal platform that will help us continuously carry the weight of responsibility, the weight of God's glory that goes with our assignment, the weight of pressure and stress that comes against us while we carry out our assignments. Grace is going to empower us to establish that internal platform of strength in our lives. And, and grace is going to stir up a, a real strong appetite and enthusiasm for kingdom advancement. That we're going to have this strong desire to see the kingdom of God advance. It's going to be like an appetite that cannot be satisfied. It's going to be a, an enthusiasm that never dies. We want to see the kingdom of God advance. We want to see the kingdom of God move throughout the earth. Grace establishes that in our lives. Grace is also going to give us the heart of a willing servant. The heart of a willing servant. We serve not because we have to, not because somebody's forcing us to, but grace is stirring up this willingness to serve in our lives. It reminds me of the uh, servant in the house in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 16 and 17. Uh, the servant worked out his time, and so it came to a point where he was free to go, but he would choose to stay in his master's house. And they would actually nail his ear to the door signifying that he was a part of that house. And when you have that kind of willingness to serve in your life, you know that your master always has your ear. He always has your ear. You're always going to be listening. You have this capacity to listen and to hear what the master is speaking into your life. And you will be a servant for life, and you'll be a servant of God forever and ever. So grace gives you a willingness to serve. It makes you to be a willing servant. Um, grace is also develop, developing a capacity in your life for structured sight, for you to be able to see and build structures according to what you see as God reveals his purpose into your life. Grace is going to do that with us. And grace is going to remove uh, the organized systems of the flesh, the methods of the flesh, and replace it with the wind or the organisms, the organized systems of the spirit. That's what grace does. It's, it's pushing the flesh out of the way and bringing in the quality of being led by the spirit. And another thing grace is going to do is place the finish in our hearts. Grace is going to place the finish in our hearts. We're going to see the finishing of all things. He that has begun a good work will complete it. He's going to finish it. God is leading us all the way through to the end, to the finish of things. God is a finisher, and he wants us to be finishers as well. So these are some of the things that grace is doing in our lives. So I hope that you receive that today. I hope that that's a good word for you, a blessing to your life, an encouragement to your life to receive the grace of God, and to walk in the grace of God. It's much more than unmerited favor. Grace is so much more. It's the power of God moving in your life without you having to do anything to earn it or pay for it. We need the grace of God. We need the grace of God. Amen. Thanks for being with me today. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Uh, again, I'm sorry about the lighting. Uh, I've got a power issue going on in my office so I got a little bit of light, but not too much. So I'm kind of in the shadows here. So pardon me for that. Again, congratulations to the Chicago Cubs on winning the World Series last night for the first time in 108 years. Yeah, you guys are going to have a great day today. Open doors in front of you. Opportunities are presenting themselves. Divine connections are coming into your life. We're declaring that today. You have resources. You have money, finances coming into your hands. You have favor with God and man. It's awesome to see what God is doing in your life today. So be encouraged. God bless you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.